The streak continues. Anaheim blows a late lead again to the Winnipeg Jets. It's gotten so bad the dog doesn't even want to be in this video. We'll talk about all of that on today's Locked On Anaheim Ducks. Just hit the music already. Your Locked On Ducks, your daily podcast on the Anaheim Ducks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked On Anaheim Ducks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, Jason J.D. Hernandez. I've been covering hockey for over a decade, and I want to thank you for making this your first listen of the day. And today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. BetOnline.net has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online is where the game starts, and where the game typically starts is okay for the Ducks. It's the endings where we have some issues. And I'll talk about that. I mean, I, I got a long list. If you want to see the list really quickly, folks, it's right here. I got a list of games. It's not good. Just a reminder, this podcast is free and available across all platforms, including Stitcher, Spotify, Odyssey, Google Podcast, Apple Podcast. Check it out on YouTube also. Hit the bell. Subscribe if you dare. I'm on Twitter at SimpyJD, shows Twitter's at LO underscore Ducks, assuming that Twitter is still alive. <laughs> Who knows at this rate, Twitter could be dead. <laughs> uh, dead just like the Ducks' chances of ever winning in regulation, because <laughs> that hasn't happened yet this season. Still a bagel. Zero wins. Let's talk about the game first, then we'll get into all the other stuff. <laughs> Starting off. I mean, it wasn't all bad. I mean, the Ducks did allow the first few shots and John Gibson looked like he was going to kill someone again. But lo and behold, guess who saved the day at the time once again? Troy Terry! Troy Vetchkin once again. His seventh of the season on a really kind of nifty shot from about the, about the point that did doink off of a defenseman. <laughs> But Troy Terry does get credit for that long distance goal. And hey, guess who got on the board? Sam Carrick. One half of the Maple Brothers got an apple on that one to make it one nothing Anaheim Ducks. Then we go on to the second period. Then that's when Kyle Connor begins to take over. Now, to his credit, Kyle Connor could have had four goals in this game. He could have if not for a great save by John Gibson and also a post. So Kyle Connor could have had more goals. He was on one after that first intermission. He was a man on a mission. He eventually did get a power play goal. And I'm going to say this again, Ducks fans. Stop me if you've heard this. The Ducks allowed a power play goal and the PK. And you're going to hear this a lot again. But the Ducks are amongst the bottom feeders in penalty killing. In fact, as of right now, they're second to last. The worst PK still belongs to the Vancouver Canucks. The, the, the Canucks are still the worst at that. But the Ducks are right there. 64.5% PK. PU on that PK. So another power play goal allowed. Tied at one. Lather, rinse, repeat. This has become a pattern. Almost every game, the Ducks have allowed a power play goal. It's been six consecutive games. They've Something's got to give at this point. It's almost like a given. Oh, a new game? The Ducks are going to allow a power play goal. I bet that'll happen on Saturday's game. Just, just wait until they allow a power play goal against the Blues. Because the Blues are actually, you know, fairly competent on the power play. Just to look ahead quickly the blues have a 21 percent power play that's pretty good i don't think the ducks are going to have much success but anyway back to the game itself on the third period it really became the kyle connor show and it's at this point where i'm going to step aside a little bit and show you this picture right here that is the entire anaheim ducks defense that is all five Ducks players 
crowding around and descending upon Kyle Connor, who is in the slot. He's right in that juicy area for a good shot. And he had all, all five of them, all five ducks are surrounding him. And not one of them could get a stick on the stick. Not one of them could lift a stick. Not one of them could block a shot. Not one of them could at least get a stick on the puck. Nope. I mean, to the credit of the Winnipeg Jets, that was a nice pass by Sam, by Sam Gagne behind his own net. So I'll give credit where credit is due. Nice pass. But there was no one around Gagne, and everyone was getting to Kyle Connor. And you could see that nice little that nice little circle. It's like they're singing kumbaya to Kyle Connor. All five are right there. You, let's let's count it. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> uh, Connor's second of the game, his fourth of the season. He's doubled his season goal count at this point. That made it 2-1 Winnipeg. But guess who came to the rescue merely 28 seconds later? Trevor Zegras. That's right. Z scored a nice, nice goal from the right side. And you could see him just pump his fist. He celebrated hard. He banged into the wall. He said, let's effing go. That's what he said to his team. And they seemed to have a little bit of a spark after that. The Ducks did have... They had their good chances after that. You know, even strength. The Ducks were not bad on this game. Shot attempts, even strength. The Ducks were better. But none of it matters. Because at the very end of the game, with 53 and a half seconds left, Kyle Connor on a nice little bounce play. And I'll describe this bounce play really quick. First, it was uh, Neil Pionk bringing it in. And then Mark Shifley had a nice little pass. It went off the boards. And the boards at that arena are pretty active. This is not like the old Boston Garden where a puck would hit the boards and just die right there. No, this puck had some bounce to it off the boards. And wouldn't you know it, Kyle Connor was right there to pick up the puck and score the game-winning goal with 53 and a half seconds left. And you could see Trevor Zegras pissed. He was mad. He was mad at himself because that was his man. He missed that assignment. But that was also, to, to Z's credit, that was a tough puck to pick up because of the large bounce it took off the boards. So that's where I'm going to try to defend Zegras just a little bit. However, that is still his man. That is still his assignment. And he took it hard. Z took it really, really hard. But, you know, that resulted in another loss for the Ducks. 3-2 was the final score. And the Ducks fall to 5-11-1. Good enough for last place in the National Hockey League. There you go. All right, we're going to head into the first intermission. But first... Let's talk about betonline.net, which is the one place that has you covered and the one place that we trust. BetOnline has you covered with more props, odds, and lines, including the NHL. And if you're betting on the Ducks, <laughs> uh, you, you poor, poor souls. Probably shouldn't be betting on the Ducks or Vancouver or the Coyotes or Columbus right now. They're all bad. Maybe you'll bet on the Devils because they're still, they're still streaking right now. And besides hockey, there's also the NBA. There's the NFL. I mean, you how much you want to bet that the game at Buffalo does not get played on Sunday? Maybe there's a line for that. You can also bet on horse racing because the horses are cool. You also have MMA. You have boxing. All of that available at Bet Online. So head on to Bet Online using either your mobile device or your laptop. To betonline.net. That is if you live in a state other than California. Bet Online is the official online sportsbook of the Locked On Podcast Network. And please, please gamble responsibly. Welcome back 
to the Locked On podcast that talks about the only team in the National Hockey League that has not won a regulation game yet this season, Locked On Ducks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. <laughs> yeah, you heard that right. The Ducks are over as far as regulation wins so far this season. If you happen to look on NHL.com right now, and you look at the standings, you see all these other teams with regulation wins. You know, Carolina has seven. Pretty much every team in the Metropolitan has seven. Columbus even has four regulation wins. Ottawa has six. Montreal has five regulation wins. The Blackhawks have four. Even the Coyotes. All six of their wins have been in regulation. San Jose has a measly three regulation wins oh but none of them hold a candle to the ducks oh no the anaheim ducks have the same amount of regulation wins as the d5 mighty ducks did at the start of part one of that movie series zero zero regulation wins can i can i share some stats with you can i just can i just share this graphic really quick because this is more hilarious than anything. So here we go again, sharing a graphic. Here we go. So the Anaheim Ducks have an active streak of 17 games without a regulation win to start the season. There's two teams above that right now. The 1999-2000 Calgary Flames, 19 games without a regulation win to begin the season. And a little something about that about that 19 game, you know, streak. That team happened to be coached by Brian Sutter. Yes, as in the Sutter family. Did you know that there's been three Sutter brothers that have coached the Calgary Flames? Bet you didn't know that, did you? He was the first brother to, to coach the Flames. He was quickly axed after that. So Brian Sutter was gone. By the way, Brent Sutter, he was hired to coach the Flames, and he was there for a season. That didn't go too well either. And now Daryl Sutter, the third of the Sutter brothers, is currently coaching the Calgary Flames. So a nice little trivia for all y'all that are into the Flames, I guess. So, yeah, those Calgary Flames. By the way, game number 19 of that streak happened to be against the Mighty Ducks of Anaheim. All the way back in November 17th, 1999. You know who got the game-winning goal for the Ducks? Late in the game, by the way, with about six minutes left. Ladislav Kohn. There's a name some of you probably didn't expect to hear today, but Ladislav scored a power play goal in the third period, late in the third period, to give the Mighty Ducks a 2-1 to one victory at the Pond. <laughs> That's how long ago that was. This was back in the days when, I mean, you had Matt Cullen on the Mighty Ducks. Remember Matt Cullen? Remember Stu, the Grim Reaper. Stu Grimson was on that team. So was my guy Paul Correa. And how about Rooch? Steve Roochin was also on that team. But... We're going way back. <laughs> the winning goalie, by the way, Guy Bear. Game number 20 of that streak was against the Red Wings, and they won that game. Now let's look to the top of that list. Going back to 2017-18. 2017, the Phoenix Coyotes. <laughs> the Phoenix Coyotes, only a few seasons ago, had a 20-game streak where they did not win a game in regulation. In fact, I was at that first game that season. That was the season opener in 2017, where the Ducks were victorious against the Coyotes, 5-4. to four. Oh, and stop me if you've heard this one before. The team on a streak blew a late lead in the third period, and I remember this because I was pretty freaking stoked at this. This was the famous 21st Duck game where a former 21st Duck said, that goal was for me. Remember Ricard Raquel's late goal to beat the Coyotes? That was a fun one. Andrew Cogliano scored with about six minutes left, 
and then Ricard Raquel, just a just a little bit over three minutes left, scored the game-winning goal. So the Coyotes blew a lead. Actually, that was the game the Coyotes blew a three-goal lead and lost 5-4. to four. That was game one of that streak. They went on to not win in regulation 19 more times. Game t- games 19 and 20 against the Winnipeg Jets. Yes, the Winnipeg Jets. They finally beat the Canadians 5-4 to, to end that streak. Yeah, so there's your list. There you go once again. The Coyotes, the Flames, and the Ducks have the active streak right now. And I, I hope you guys don't mind that I actually put right there 17 and counting. Because they're playing the Blues next. I, I don't know. The Blues are on a bit of a streak. The Blues were, keyword, were the worst team as far as standings not that long ago. And all of a sudden, the Blues find themselves on a five-game winning streak. They're, they're the hot team right now. Yeah, the St. Louis Blues. They're back at 500. They're right back in the playoff spot. I wouldn't be surprised if the Blues extend their winning streak to six and seven games after it's all said and done. So, yeah, a little bit of dubious history that the Ducks are on right now. And it it really honestly could get to 18 and 19. So if you want to look even further ahead, I mean, where do you go from this point? Do you look further ahead? I mean, who who can they beat at this point? The Rangers? The Rangers are still a good team. The Rangers, if you remember, they beat the Ducks earlier this season. So I don't even know if it can happen there. I would say the best chance for the Ducks to end this streak would be next Friday, Black Friday, a week from today against the Ottawa Senators. If there's any chance for the Ducks to right the ship, it's that game. So I'll make my prediction right now. I say the Ducks tie the streak against the Coyotes. And they beat Ottawa in regulation. And I predict that will be a big win. By then, they've got to be ticked. I mean, they're ticked right now. 17. It's too big of a number, folks. But you know what's also concerning? The Ducks blowing a game late with less than three minutes left. This is not just a flash in the pan type of thing. This is a pattern. This is a pattern that dates back to earlier this season and last season. How often has this happened? How often have the Ducks blown a lead like this? Well, guess what? I have the notes right here. We'll get to that on the other side. Welcome back to Locked On Anaheim Ducks. It's part of the Locked On Podcast Network. You're still locked in with Jason Hernandez. I'm the host of the only team that hasn't won a regulation game. I also get to cover this team, and I've covered them for a few seasons now. And I've come to realize that these late losses, this this is a bad pattern. First, let's get to the games themselves. So I compiled a list, and I actually stopped halfway through because I couldn't bear to go on. But here's a list of some of the games where the Ducks blew a late lead with under three minutes left in regulation. So let's start with last night's game against the Winnipeg Jets. As you know, Connor scored a hat trick. If you didn't know that by now, (laughs) where have we been the last 18 minutes? So that happened. Let's also go back to just last week against the Chicago Blackhawks with 242 left in that game. The Ducks blew a goal to give Chicago a victory. And that was also a regulation loss. Let's go back even further, shall we? Let's. How about November 1st when I was flying into New York? I didn't actually watch that one because I was flying in and didn't actually watch it. But (laughs) the Ducks blew that one late against San Jose. 
and wound up losing in a shootout. That was a long night too. Six to five in a shootout. Of course, it was Eric Carlson that scored with 2.12 left in regulation to tie the game. Yeah, that, that was a bad one. That's just this season. Remember how I said this was a pattern? This dates back to last season. Oh, you want to go back to last season? Yeah, let's do that. I'm glad you want to go on this journey with me. <laughs> last season, April 14th, 2022. The Ducks blew a late lead to the Tampa Bay Lightning. Nikita Kucherov scored with 13 seconds left. Anaheim had a 3-2 lead. Kucherov scored late to tie things up. And then Anthony Torelli won it in overtime. So the Ducks lost in overtime. Oh, let's go back even further. Let's go back to February 11th against the Kraken. Yep, the Kraken are on this list too. This one took place with a minute 42 left. Jordan Eberle broke a 3-3 tie. Seattle won it in regulation 4-3. Now, we're going to go back to a game that the Ducks actually won, but this one was bad, and this one goes out to a certain someone that I know is listening right now. November 30th, 2021. The Ducks had a 4-1 lead in the third period at Staples Center. And then Adrian Kempe, Alex Iafalo, and Dustin Brown all scored late in the third to tie things up at four. The Ducks had a three-goal lead and blew it to the Kings. Oh, man. Now, the only cool thing about that was at least the Ducks won it in a shootout. That was a great Trevor Zegras shootout. I remember that one. That was a fun one. But back to the losses. Let's go back to October 26th against... Oh, wait. Who is that again? Oh, the Winnipeg Jets are back. <laughs> oh, this one was painful. The Ducks had a 3-2 lead with two minutes left in the third period at the Ponda against Winnipeg. And then Nikolai Ehlers scored not one, but two goals in a row. In a row, rather. Ehlers scored with 120 left. Then he scored with a minute left. In the blink of an eye, the Ducks blew a one-goal lead and lost in regulation to the Winnipeg Jets. Oh, but there's one I thought was worse than that. This one I think I yelled at at the time. The Minnesota Wild. Marcus Foligno scored with under eight seconds left. It was a 1-1 game. The Ducks relaxed. And Marcus Foligno scored with, like, almost no time. And the Ducks blew that game 2-1 to one in regulation. And to go back even further, because, you know, I'm a glutton for punishment like that. We have to go back to the previous season. And this is where I kind of stopped because I couldn't take anymore. Let's go back to... April 30th, 2021, because I know there's a certain Kings fan listening to this, enjoying this. Yeah. April 30th, 2021, against the Los Angeles Kings. With about 55 and a half seconds left, Andre Kopitar scored the game-winning goal. In fact, I'll go even further. The Ducks had a 1-0 lead in that game. At Honda Center. Leas Anderson tied it up with five minutes left. Andre Kopitar with 55 and a half seconds left. He won the game. And regulation. Two to one. So if you think you've seen this before. You have. I didn't even go into all the other games. In the 2021 season. I didn't even get to 2020. I didn't even look at 2019. But I know I've said this phrase enough times that I know that the Ducks blew a late lead with under two minutes in regulation. I know I've said that a bunch of times. Folks, this is a pattern. If I've talked about that many games, 
that I could barely fit it on one post-it note, you know it's bad. You 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 know it is. It, it's it's a pattern, and where do you put the blame on that kind of pattern? Do you put it on the players? Maybe. I, I think I know where the blame is going to go. It, it's got to go to coaching. And it starts at the top. This is a Dallas Eakins pattern. Because I don't recall the Ducks blowing this many late leads when they were winning all those divisions. I don't recall them blowing games with regularity like this in the early 2010s. I mean, yeah, they blew leads, but it didn't happen this often. And not that late in a game. It, it's a bad pattern. It, it has to start with Dallas Eakins. And Ducks fans have got to wonder, what's it going to take? What What is it going to take for the Ducks to make some kind of change in the coaching ranks? Now, I know there was many surprised that Coach Eakins is back for another season. I get that. But there's there's got to be some changes made. If the Ducks are going to move forward on this rebuild, which I feel like has taken a couple of steps back this season, then there's got to be some changes. So I'll ask you, what changes would you make? I know most of you are going to say the coaching staff has to change. I know all of you are going to probably say fire Dallas Eakins. But I feel like it's more than that. What else has to change? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Let me know on Twitter. Let me know via email. That's going to do it for today's show. If you, were, if you want to reach out via email, you know, what else has to change? You can drop me a line at LockedOnAnaheimDucks at gmail.com. If you want to follow me on Twitter, if it's still active, you could follow me on Twitter, assuming it's still alive, at StimpyJD. The show's Twitter is at LO underscore Ducks, assuming Twitter still works and it's not broken into a million pieces. Also, this podcast is available on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, Odyssey, and also on YouTube. So if you want to drop a comment on the YouTube, let me know what you think. Well, that's going to do it for this show, but we have a bonus episode coming up later. So stick around for that. It'll be a fun one. Once again, thank you all so much for your continued support. It is greatly appreciated. For Locked on Anaheim Ducks, I'm Jason J.D. Hernandez saying have a great rest of the day. Please continue to be safe out there. Be kind to one another and Ducks somewhat fly together.